I just had the worst stream of my life. Welcome, everybody. My name is Cheesy, and today we're going to take a look at the anniversary event for Dead by Daylight. I really debated on whether to make this video or not, but I think this will help bridge the gap between survivor and killer, as well as, hopefully, dev and player. To preface this, I play both sides. I spent the first five or six hundred hours exclusively playing killer. I understand the challenge of balancing your chase gameplay with your macro. I know the struggle of bully squads. I get it. Killer is stressful. I think everybody can generally agree with that conclusion. Now, with that being said, this event is terrible for solo queue survivors, which is a shame because DBD events are usually fairly well balanced and a ton of fun. The premise is to introduce some fun game gimmicks while earning a ton of blood points. Behavior has had some misses in the past, but they have never missed the mark by this much. Dead by Daylight's gameplay loop is very simple. For those of you that are new, as a survivor you work on gens until the killer finds you, generally. At this point, the meat of the game begins, that being the chase. A good chase can win the game for your team while a poor one can doom them. The goal is to avoid being down by the killer for as long as possible. It's very simple, but there is a bit of a learning curve. Now. Events are usually meant to change up the gameplay loop in fun, innocuous ways. This is not the case for the anniversary event. The event is so skewed toward the killer side, it's... Well, it's, it's honestly amazing. What is it about the event that makes it so bad? Well, there are two answers to that question. The first is we want blood points. Survivors are going out of their way to earn extra blood points. They're opening chests, doing totems, and generally doing everything except the objective. Nearly half of my games ended before three gens had even been completed. That is insane. For further context, I only escaped two games in my three and a half hour stream. And I know what you're thinking, get good, stop whining. Well, buckle up, because I've barely gotten started. Killers are also trying to make as many blood points as possible, which, naturally, leads toward playstyles that are less than savory, such as camping and, well, dare I say tunneling. And I can't even blame them. Seeing as behavior, so is a lot of work to do to make those playstyles less viable. Now, maybe you're beginning to see why it is challenging for survivors, especially in solo queue, to enjoy the game. Oh, what's that? It's still a skill issue. Well, maybe. I can acknowledge that, I'm not super cracked at the game, but maybe if I had just looked better, it wouldn't be an issue. Right? Well, not necessarily. This event introduced unique abilities for both survivors and killers. For survivors, you can drop a party pallet that exists solely to stun the killer, which for the killer is easy to simply respect for a hair of a second and yoink them right after. Then you have the window blocks, which used properly have some utility, but you're not guaranteed to have a window nearby, especially a safe window. Then you have quiet mode, which is a very interesting ability that essentially does what you think. It muffles grunts of pain, reduces scratch marks, and the like. Not bad, but not particularly good, especially when you consider the opposing abilities. Killers can near instantly break pellets, which often ends up in a free hit and lost resources for survivors. Then they have the ability to have base kit enduring, basically negating any benefit survivor would have from the party pallets and getting a free hit or a down. Yet neither of those proves to be as problematic as the third ability, which is the ability to instant hook survivors. You may not think that this is that big of a deal, but it eliminates the ability to get pallet saves and further reduces the time for survivors to get into position to save or stop the hook in the first place. This helps killers to snowball and maintain game-winning pressure throughout the entire game. Now, this is not a hate letter to killers in the slightest. I understand why they're using the resources at their disposal. You know, I might do the same in their shoes. It's not a character fault. It doesn't make them bad people. I just want them to understand the solo queue survivor perspective. I never thought I'd make a video like this. My aim in playing DBD is to have fun and enjoy the game, but this event is well, it's too much. I hope the behavior can see this and make the next event fair to everyone. I hope you all enjoy the video or at least understand where I'm coming from. 
This is my favorite multiplayer game of all time, and I just want everybody to have fun, regardless of the role. I hope you all will consider tuning in to my next stream or subscribing to my YouTube channel. I will be streaming Monday, Wednesday, Friday, maybe Saturdays for the foreseeable future, and uploading videos at least once a week. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, have a great rest of your day, and goodbye, y'all.